What's going on? Uh, this is Quaman, Quaman Fowler, and uh, I wanted to come on and record a little bit and talk about Quinell Gaskin. So, Quinell, I met Quinell um, probably like in the early 2000s. Um, you know, and uh, we would do these jam sessions with Drew Collins at um, his dad's church, Mount Rose. And so, y'all have to excuse me because I'm gonna be wiping my nose. I've been snotting and crying since last night, since I heard everything. But uh, let me try to move through things quickly. Um, but anyway, I met Cornell way back then and of course the first thing that stood out is like how ridiculous he was on the keys and so when we talked we immediately was just so intrigued and had a um, a love for each other because we both had a skill you know that was parallel and very um, you know uh, can uh, but we also love God and had a passion for um, expressing that through our music and so um, Q was like one of the best in the world like I'm a musician and I've heard a lot of musicians play with a lot of musicians but um, Cornell on keys was probably like one of the best in terms of being able to uh, translate what he has in his heart and his ears and his head and be able to spontaneously just put it out there and execute it within milliseconds. He was like an open vessel, like God used him um, and he could just get right there to the heart of what he was trying to express. It's like I've, I said on DeMarcus Walker's post, you know, Quinnell was like a, um, on a different, he was tuned to a different frequency. And uh, <laughs> then you have all of us, but he was definitely one who, uh, man, he was so uh, prolific and he was, he was uh, just an amazing man. It's just a trip thinking about him and he's gone. Physically, I always say that because his, his heart and his spirit is captured in, in every post, every Instagram post, YouTube post, recording, you hear his heart, you feel the, the presence of God um, in Quinnell and his music and so it was a sincerity a joy uh, you could feel the love you could feel the prophetic gifts you could feel um, just the word of knowledge like all of the fruits <laughs> of the spirit you can definitely experience that when you listen to 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 Quell, Quinnell's music and so I had the pleasure of recording with him on Songs of Levi and uh, more to come. I was able to uh, do some horn arrangements and actually play on that one, saxophone and iwi. And he just loved me on the, the saxophone, of course, and also the iwi. And so uh, he just knew whenever he had something, he wanted to have me on it. And so uh, we had that. And in this, in this room here, we had some of the most killing experiences just in rehearsal. And also, of course, at Drew's place, we would do those rehearsals, man. And um, it was just amazing because we had a chance to experience um, like traveling. Like even though we'd be sitting in one place playing for hours, we could go on a journey and go places um, just kind of uh, as the spirit led and Quinnell would be hearing 
uh, grooves and, and, and melodies and, and things that we would explore. And so we would just be taking trips around the world, <laughs> but just staying right in one place on our instrument. And there's not many people who I've experienced that with, um, you know, on, on the piano and had the ability to translate it like in real time, letting the bass player know what to do, letting the drummer know what to do, letting the horn players know what to do, playing the line and we setting it up and then it's transitioning into a different, um, into a different vibe or we're, we're going into a different experience. Like I love that because he brought that world of, uh, you know, gospel, playing by ear, church, worship, being led of the spirit, but he had the chops like an Art Tatum, which didn't make any sense because <laughs> we put all that together. And the thing about it, he would always say he didn't ever really learn jazz like that. It was always a thing. He said he would practice at church and he would put, uh, what he say, uh, great is thy faithfulness in all 12 keys. And he would play hymns all the time and he would put them in different keys. And like, I just don't know how he was able to get that, that language. But that's the thing about it, he had his own language. You know, it was like, uh, it was uh, church bop. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was soulful church jazz. You know, I'm throwing out these terms just because he embodied his own language and um, it was it was a trip because he didn't study the traditional enclosures and transcribe you know a bunch of Oscar Peterson and, and, and stuff like that um, he, even though he could get around and do all of this stuff if you listen to him closely he didn't have the language like that that was straight church church language but he had the chops to be able to play what he heard. And so that's the beauty about him. But the thing that makes Q so influential is, um, is his heart. You know, the Bible talks about how uh, David was a man after God's own heart. And uh, he had that ability to be able to play and heal and set people free because of his uh, heart towards God, God was with him, his skill, um, and all of those things. And Cornell was like that on that piano. He had that, or with songwriting, arranging, he had that. And so that's why he's touched so many lives around the world. And then every time I watch a video, I watch a rehearsal, it just, uh, it's, it's tough, it's hard. Um, because, you know, he was a great example um, of one who was sold out to God, loved, loved God. You know, he had the heart uh, like a David, you know, man after God's own heart. Quinnell had that. Plus his skill level was like, you know, second to none on that piano. And so... And then, of course, our experience, uh, you know, in, ch in church and, and the cool stuff that we like, all of the modern language and hipness, chord-wise, rhythm-wise, groove-wise. He played drums, too. And his, his son, Josiah, played drums and produced. So it's, it's a trip how um, just all of that flavor he had and could present it. And uh, it was just great you know, uh, being a friend to him and, a, you know, a musician buddy because we would love each other's songs. He loved Island Dance of mine. He loved, um, in the village, he came up with something crazy at the end and I actually put it in the recording. I had already recorded the tune, but what he came up with in the, at a gig when we was at Scat was so killing, I had to put it into a... Uh, into the recording. I'll try to share some of that. And I'll share some of the stuff where we're rehearsing and stuff here. But, um, man, some beautiful moments, some timeless 
moments or like I say, eternal moments. Um, and those things stick with you for a lifetime. And it's just amazing how God can use somebody uh, to put seeds in you, to water you. And um, as you sit back and think, in hindsight, you actually see the influence or you see the positive uh, effect or the effect that God was able to have through that individual being led of the spirit in order to influence you influence you and so um Cornell has definitely um, been a blessing to me as to so to so many others and um we encouraged each other and we um you know we gave each other um you know, it's just a great. It was a, it was just great to see how God moved through us together, and like, you know, being different instrumentalists, but we're part of the same body, like like the body of Christ. You have all the different members, but it's just amazing to see how God used him, and he used uh, me and and us together to create great moments and uh, music. And so the last thing he's recorded with me, Cornell, was uh, You're My Protection, my album that I recorded and released uh, in 2023. I uh, recorded, recorded it um, almost two years ago at the time of this video. It was the end of 2022. And uh, we recorded at um, Weatherford College and uh, me, uh, JT, Jason Thomas on the drums, Braylon Lacey on the bass, um, and Quinnell on piano. And we did uh, record some songs there. And I was able to put it out the next year. And I had no idea. I had it videotaped and everything. So I put a, together a video of You're My Protection that you can check out on YouTube. And the album itself is on um, all the streaming platforms. But you never know when is uh, the last time you'll be with somebody or the last recording you're going to have with someone. You just don't know. But God has a way of impressing something on your spirit and your heart to do. And um, you do it. And a lot of times, especially as a creative musician, you don't know how you're going to uh, how you're going to get the return back on your investment, but you do it anyway. A lot of times in, in my cases, uh, you do you do things because you feel impressed to do it and you never know what's connected to it or how that's going to be a blessing uh, to people, to us as musicians, just doing it and sharing it with others, being able to play those songs live, being able to, um, uh, share those songs with people and perform them. It's uh, it's so much that goes far beyond what we can control or even know that we are participating in. But we just know that we need to do this. <laughs> and some type of way, God orchestrates things and he uses our works to... Um, to tell his story, to craft uh, a story and, um, you know, get glory through what we do. And uh, that's just am amazing. I want to leave you with this, um, you know, a story. Like when I was in uh, college, I was practicing one day in my dorm. No, not my dorm. I was in my uh apartment at the time over there close to LSU I went to Southern University in Baton Rouge and so I was practicing my tenor really going in practicing and then I felt God like stop me pause have me pause for a minute and say hey you see how much you practice and how much you're looking to express yourself through the saxophone and how much you've 
uh, have transcribed and listened and learned tunes and all of those specific things because you wanted to express yourself through this horn. And so I was like, yep. And he went deeper and said, you see how if you were to put that horn down, it wouldn't do anything. You would actually have to put the reed um, on the mouthpiece and put the ligature over the mouthpiece to clamp the, the reed to it. And then you have to put the mouthpiece on the neck and then put the neck on the body of the horn. And then when you blow, you blow and you have to push the keys for it to get uh, the notes and to play the melodies you want to, to play. And then when people hear you play that saxophone, you're playing the saxophone, but they hear you. Wow. And that detailed explanation, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. And he's like, yes. Like the same way you use that saxophone to express your heart. And so I want to use you as my instrument. <laughs> and when he said that, I was like, oh my goodness. It blew my mind. Because I knew what it meant. I knew what he meant. Um, and so I just, I just dived in deeper with trying to seek God more, read his word, you know, uh, fast, uh, pray, and get, went to different conferences and was reading. And I just dug in because I, I wanted to be responsible with that, um, envision or you know what he impressed that word he, he gave me you know and so it just blew me away um, that God will use something that you have a passion for your gift in the natural and then he'll sprinkle his thing on it <laughs> or you know it'll bloom or he'll give you that moment where you actually had that epiphany moment and you realized that the whole time he was preparing you to be used of him. And I think that's like the, the message that I've gotten um, even from Quinnell's life. You know, uh, God used him to be instrumental in my life and so many others so that uh, we could see and hear God through his obedience. You know, yeah, he had to practice. That stuff just don't happen. <laughs> he had to practice. He was diligent. He had he had the discipline, but just the way that he heard from heaven and made it uh, tangible, if you would, you know, sonically. And um, the way he was able to take us along with him to craft the, the world that he imagined uh, musically, sonically, uh, soul from his soul and from his spirit is amazing. And he was definitely one that God had his hand on and that he used to be instrumental. And so that's what I wanted to leave you with. So to all the family and all the people, friends that um, are affected by this loss of Quinnell physically, my prayers and condolences are go out to you and uh, just be um, strong, be encouraged, and just know, let this be a, um, a message to get you uh, to the point where you make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. We all have an expiration date, and, um, but at the same time, just we need to be in a posture of making sure that we're hearing from God, we're being um, obedient and allowing him to use us to reach, touch lives. Um, first starts in the home and then outside, you know, whatever God wants to do, you know, but first and foremost, we got to have the right heart and, um, you know, and, and spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to, to use us. All right. So God bless y'all. We're, we're going to make it through it. All right, peace.